hey what's up guys welcome to my channel and today in this video which is the third part of live wire components we will look at three very important things about components when specifically you are using them as a full page component we will look at how we can use different layouts for specific components then we will look at how route parameters can be used with the full page components for example how we can use the route parameters how we can do route model binding and we will also look at how we can add page titles to those full page components which is an important part when you are building you know applications so without wasting much time let's get started in our previous video we have created this web route which is slash counter and this is a full page component that we were using and that is the reason we have this counter over here let me correct the spelling first so we have our blade file much better now the first thing that we would like to know is what is a layout and how we can change it so if you have followed my previous videos you would have seen that i created a component layout app.blade.php so we have our app.blade.php and if i create a new one let's just say admin.blade.php if you have a application where there are some routes which are you know kind of for the admins and there is a different layout um, where there's a different navigation and you have a different one for normal app uh, normal users you can use this functionality so let me first copy the basic layout file and what we will do is just to ensure that we are loading the correct layout i will do something like this is admin layout okay now if i go to the browser and if i hit refresh nothing changes and it is supposed and it is not supposed to do that because we haven't done anything with the layout now the first thing that we can do is we can go to our component let me go to the counter component over here okay and then the first way we can define a layout is using this attribute so if i do components layouts app rather admin can you see now the admin layout is suddenly starting to appear okay this is fine there's one more way you can add the layout definition which is right on top of the component which is over here and it will give us the same result because if i refresh it gives me this as admin layout if i comment it out refresh that thing goes away right and then there's the last one which is if i comment it out and go over here and do layout and then components layouts admin it might give you a in a squiggly for the error but believe me it does work so we have three ways that we can define a layout for our full page components but then a question may come in what is the preference that livewire will give so let's just say what we will do is over here we will do count equals 1 and then dollar count greater than 1 then we will say the layout is admin okay maybe something like if role is greater than 1 or if the role is 1 those kind of stuff then we have this otherwise okay the extra quote is a problem and we do this so now what happens let's just say we have this commented out count is 1 so ideally it should open up it should bring the layout file that is correct and now if i do 2 it will load the admin right 
So if I make it one, now it is opening the, I mean, loading the app layout, which is this. And if I open this definition as an uncommented, what happens? All right. So the attribute takes higher priority. What if I put it on top of the render method? Does that change anything? No, it doesn't because it is still loading the layout file. The last one, if I have, oops, something went a bit weird. Um, right. If I do app over here, so I have this layout kind of a definition. What happens now? Well, it looks like this one takes precedence over this. What if I do app here and admin over here? I'm loading the admin and if I completely remove the layout function and refresh, we continue to load the layout. That basically means that the render function when calls the method, it has preference one. Then we have this higher level of press, uh, preference and then this one gets the highest preference in terms of the hierarchy. But yeah, this is what we have in terms of an, an attribute which we can use to define the layout of our full page components. Going by the same rules, we have one more thing which we can define, which is title. And if I do something like counter over here, you will see right now it says page title. Now it says counter. Right, and let me check if we have the similar behavior counter render. Right, so this is taking higher preference, and if I remove that, it now says counter render. So, this is how these two attributes can be used to change the behavior of your full page components. Now, another important aspect of components in Livewire is the ability to route model bind the components based on URL, which is a very strong feature. So I'll show you what we mean by route model binding first, and then how that translates to Livewire's functionality as well. So we have this route over here, which is slash counter. And if I do something like ID over here, then it means that this particular route is expecting a parameter over here as ID. So now suddenly if I hit refresh, nothing changes. But if I do something like one, sorry, I didn't save that file. So if I hit refresh now, first of all, the immediate change is that my slash counter will start showing 404 because the definition of the route now has changed. It is expecting an ID. So if I pass an ID, now I am able to see the screen. But then the question is, what can we do with this ID, which we are passing in the URL and how we can bind it? To demonstrate that, let's take an example. I will need to create a user. So maybe I'll run Tinker and do user create and I'll pass all the required parameters so that I can create a user. I do that and now I have one user in my database. To show you that I'll just hit refresh and you can see I have one entry in my user table. So let's understand how we can use that. As I said, the first option is that I can use this ID inside my component. So if I go over here, let's just say, I'll create a new method over here. This is you know, one of those lifecycle methods that we get, mount. So the mount function is executed every time the component starts to kind of you know, render itself, right? And we can be rest assured that anything written over here will get executed before the component is ready. Now, I can set a property and we will discuss about property in details a bit later. But let's just say we have this 
property very similar to how we had a property called count right so we have this property user and now what i can do is in the mount function i can add a parameter i'm saying that it will get an id all right and then what i can do is i can just define that my user is going to be user find dollar id which is the argument that i'm expecting over here and with this done what can happen is if i go to my counter dot blade dot php counter for and i can do something like user name ideally it should work let's save and see what is there so yes i'm getting amitav roy as the user's name property and if i do anything else right it is right now giving me a error because it can't find the user and if i don't pass that argument we already saw that it's not a valid route so it will anyways sh show a 404 but then the true route model binding is where you know, when i pass this id laravel understands what kind of entity i'm expecting and i don't need to additionally do this so to do that delete the so then the question is how do we do that well the first part is instead of saying that this is an id we will define this as user by doing this we are basically telling the framework that in here i'm expecting a parameter which will be bounded right it will automatically bind to this entity and this entity because the route parameter is id it will try to extract that id and try to search in the database now i said that it will try to search in the database which basically means that now i can do something like user dollar user and i can also do this so i am not explicitly running this query let's see if the functionality works and it does and again if i do two now can you see it is not showing an error anymore if you remember when we had id and if i undo a little bit this two was giving me an error oops undefined variable id is because this is dollar id i'll just show you once more if you see it says cannot assign null to property id right so it is not able to find it it's not able to understand what's happening and then suddenly you know it it goes for a toss but is it still doing a route model binding i don't think so yeah um a simple way to test that is if i do dd dollar id right it's two so yeah that's fine so we can see that it is not doing its part and you know we don't get the user and hence the component doesn't render it's an error but what happens when i do user is the framework laravel automatically understands that it's a route model binding it understands that we are expecting an entity of type user right and it will automatically query the database okay and when it doesn't find that user with id2 it is smart enough to give you a 404 rather than an exception being thrown saying you know the id doesn't exist or something like that okay that's how the routing is handled and it's a good um i would say good way of defining these parameters into your application because then you know the framework is doing the exception handling for you right all right so we can see that you know we don't need to write any query anymore because previously we were doing doing user dot find and we were passing the id but livewire is smart enough to add one more layer of nicety which is if i just delete this it still shows 404 and for one it does show me the username which basically means that the user is getting loaded but i am not 
assigning that user anywhere in this code. Livewire is smart enough to understand that it's a route model binding and it is automatically populating that variable to this property, considering that you know, both the entities are same. Otherwise, if I do something like um, customer, obviously it will fail because I don't have a variable called user anymore. Okay. So that is something which you need to take care of. But otherwise, the framework and the package uses a lot of niceties when you are doing route model binding. And I strongly recommend that if you have such requirements, you should take full advantage of this feature. So yeah, that's about it, guys. That's what I wanted to cover in terms of the third part of components. Yes, it's a big one and we have covered a lot of things. I hope these things are clear to you now. If you have any kind of questions, then feel free to comment below or get in touch with me on Discord and I will try to help you as much as possible. If you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.